Hey y'all, Ralston here. Or if you followed my Appalachian Trail through hike, you may know me as Maverick. Uh, but I have exciting announcements to make. Uh, I'm hiking the Pacific Crest Trail this summer, uh, 2023, going Sobo starting July 4th. Um, so I'm really excited about uh, season two of Ralston's big adventure coming up. But I uh, wanted, wanted to go ahead and give you guys a uh, gear review today of just all the things that I'm taking. Uh, it's a lot different than my Appalachian Trail hike. So I've got some new Hyperlite mountain gear. Uh, I'm bringing like one or two things along from the Appalachian Trail, uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. Also, if you're not familiar with the term Sobo, that means southbound. So on the Appalachian Trail, I went northbound. So I started in Georgia, went to Maine. Um, so on the Pacific Crest Trail, I'll actually start in at the border of Canada and go down to the border of Mexico through Washington, Oregon, and then California. Um, so that's what that means, uh, just in case you were wondering. All right, so first up on the list of gear is my new tent. It is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Unbound Two-Person Tent. Um, it's a single wall trekking pole tent, um, which means that this rain fly is attached. So it doesn't have a separate rain fly um, like the one I have on the Appalachian Trail. On the AT, I use the REI Quarter Dome, which was a freestanding tent, which has a, like a separate rain fly. Um, this tent is... Um, much lighter it only weighs one pound when you pack it uh it's got uh ultralight trekking pole or um ultralight stakes as well um i saw a lot of people with the mountain with the hyperlight mountain gear uh equipment and so i just was like i'll try it out for myself but uh yeah it's very spacious it's dyneema um so here's me inside my tent so i mean if it's i'm six two so here's me like fully laid out in my tent. I have tons of room. Uh, it's, you know, if I like sit up in it, I have plenty of room above me. So it's good. It's a good tent. Um, but yeah, this is all part of my elaborate scheme to be a little bit more ultralight. All right. So next on the list is my new pack. All right. So this is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear, um, unbound 40 40 liter pack uh this is actually their newest backpack they came out with it this year um my buddy patch actually has one and recommended that i get it uh but again this backpack only weighs i think maybe maybe a pound and a half um by itself and so again like trying to cut down on my base weight my base weight this year is going to be probably around uh 15 pounds um which is considerably lighter than what i had on the at um, I was at 25 pounds on the AT, which is like really stinking heavy. Um, but it fits everything pretty good. Everything else is in here other than my tent. It's still set up over there. Um, I think I'm gonna attach my tent here to the top. So this strap right here connects with this strap right here. Let me click real quick. All right. So as you can see, it's strapped together. So I can put my tent right here and then cinch it down with this right so that's kind of my plan for now we may see i may put my bear bag or a bear can on top um but yeah so this is this is the pack i'm taking and if you watch my appalachian trail videos you know how much how many problems i have with backpacks i went through three backpacks so hopefully this one will get me all the way to mexico all right next up is my sleep system uh this is the big agnes uh sleeping pad that i have and this is the big agnes twin degree sleeping bag that i have um I actually had this sleeping pad on the AT. So this is the last sleeping pad I had. I actually went through, an, again, three sleeping pads, um, but ended up with this one, uh, bought it in Vermont, and fantastic, fantastic, fantastic um, sleeping pad. This was absolutely super comfortable. So highly recommend um, the Aircore sleeping pad by Big Agnes, um, just for comfort. I mean, it is pretty heavy and it's big, but well worth every bit of the weight. Uh, this is a 20 degree bag from Big Agnes. Uh, I actually used it um, in December on a trip that I went to out in California. Um, I slept really good in it at about 40, 30, 38, 40 degrees. Um, so I'm really excited to use it. I think it'll be really, really warm. Um, so yeah, and uh, this will be different than the one that I had on the AT. Um, I had a Kelty bag on the AT that kind of started wearing out. Um, so I just figured I needed a new bag. The Kelty that I used was about mm, seven years old. Um, so this is a lot newer. Uh, the down is probably still 
um, good and not well worn like my Kelty was. So excited to use the uh, Big Agnes Twin Degree bag. I'd also have these Dyneema stuff sacks from Hyperlite as well. Uh, so I think I said something about Dyneema material earlier and never really explained what that was. Uh, Dyneema is waterproof. And so uh, that's what this bag's made out of, my backpack's made out of, and my tent is made out of. Um, so that just means that it is kind of completely waterproof. So, I mean, if I were to, you know, put essentials in here, like I'm gonna put my phone, my, um, um, my charge, uh, like my battery pack, my charger, all my electronics, basically anything valuable will probably go in here. Um, and I can just dump it in water if it gets, or if it gets rained on or whatever it may be, um, it will not get wet once you cinch it down and close it off. So, um, these are gonna be really helpful and useful. Uh, and they're really, really, really lightweight. And then as far as my cook system, um, taking the old uh, Stanley uh, titanium cup. Um, I use this on the AT, this thing was great. Um, I'll do the same thing I did on the AT of just boiling water, putting it into um, ramen noodles. Also there's a uh, curry, uh, my cousin's dog. Um, and then my BRS uh, camp stove. So the BRS is the tiny little stove that I use. It's like maybe half an ounce. Oh no, that's like maybe, maybe half a pound. I don't know, this thing weighs absolutely nothing. And this is my camp stove. Um, so you can just attach this to like your, uh, your fuel canister and then light it up and then full water. So taking that again, um, since that works so well. Uh, also, I will be taking the same water filtration system. So I'm gonna take a CNOC bag and a Sawyer squeeze filter. Um, I will be getting a new one. I have a hole in this CNOC bag, so I'll, I'll need a new one. Plus this filters, this filter got me through the entire AT, but it will not last much more than that. So I will be replacing these. Also, they stink really bad because um, they were just constantly wet. They're probably mildewed like crazy. So I'm gonna get a new one, but I'm taking, but I'm gonna take the same one. So I'll take another Sawyer Squeeze, I'll take another C-Knock bag, um, but just not those exact ones. Um, as far as apparel goes, um, I'll be wearing darn tough socks. Um, I'll have a pair of shorts, they'll probably rip. I went through like three pairs of shorts and a couple T-shirts. Um, so I'm not expecting any of those to last. So I'll probably just get something that's, um, you know, kind of sweat resistant, probably not nothing cotton. Um, cause they say cotton kills out there. Cause it, when it gets wet, it gets soaked and then it freezes and then you die of hypothermia. Um, but I'll probably take, be taking material that's uh, very, uh, moisture wicking. So, um, and dries out really quickly. So I don't really know what I'm not, I'm not a good fabric person, but I think like polyester maybe the material I'll use, but uh, I just, I, I know that I'll go through multiple of those. So just whatever's cheap. Um, I also am gonna bring my puffy coat that I wore on the AT. Um, I got this from REI and it really served me really well. Um, so I'll be taking the puffy coat. Um, I'll also be taking a mid layer. Um, so this is a light heart gear um, jacket. So if you're familiar with like, if you're familiar with like Melanzana, um, this is a very similar type jacket, uh, just a different company. Uh, but it is a great, great, great mid layer to have when it gets really cold. Um, so I'm really excited to bring this along as well. Now the PCT is going to be pretty cold since you're at higher elevation a lot of the time. So this is going to come in really handy. Um, also, as far as my shoes, uh, I will be wearing more than likely as, as much as I can find North Face um, brand shoes. I think these are the Vective 5s. Um, so I wore a pair of Vective, I think, 4s on the AT, and they were really, really comfortable shoes. Um, I switched to a pair of Ultras once, and I'll have to say I'm just not a fan of Ultras. Um, they really killed my feet, gave me a lot of blisters. So not a fan of Ultras at all. Um, I know a lot of people are, so that's probably a very unpopular opinion. But um, I found that North Face just really fit my feet well and really, like, um, were very comfortable on my feet and didn't give me as many blisters, didn't hurt my feet as bad. So I'll more than likely be wearing North Face as much as possible. Um, I may have to switch it up as I go along. I've heard like Solomon's are pretty good, Brooks are pretty good. So, um, and you can find those pretty regularly. So I'll probably try to switch to those if I can't find, if I don't have access to the North Face boots as much. But those are what I prefer and what I'll be starting with. Um, I'm also wearing uh, these, these are zero, these are zero shoes. Um, so they're super lightweight. 
um, shoes. I'll be using them for like camp shoes. Um, they weigh absolutely nothing. Um, so yeah, so that's gonna be my new pair of camp shoes. Um, I had a pair of Tevas on the, the AT, but I lost one. So I had to uh, get another pair. So I go, went with the Zero shoes because they're lighter weight. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty much the gear I'll be wearing. Um, and then I've got my trekking poles over there in the tent. They're my same lucky trekking poles. Um, I'll show you here in a second. Yeah, so these poles hold up really well. And so I'll need them also for my tent to set them up since this is a trekking pole tent. Um, but yeah, these will be, I'll be taking as far as trekking poles go. I've got my stickers, my DGEN sticker. Shout out to all the DGENs out there. Um, that was my trail family last year. Um, but yeah, so these are the poles. And last but not least, probably my most controversial piece of gear, the bear canister. So this is what I'm gonna store my food in. I bought this last year for the AT. I finished out the last 700 miles with this thing. Um, it's, it's, it holds about seven days worth of food. Um, but I found that if you eat like me on trail, it holds your snacks for seven days, but not your meals. So what I would do is I would usually pack this full of snacks and breakfasts and lunches, and then I'd have my mountain house meals just stuffed somewhere in my backpack. Um, so I'll probably do that again because this just doesn't hold enough to feed me. Um, but the thing that I like about the bear canister is, is not so much that it is a, um, it protects against bears, um, but more so it protects against rodents. So more likely than not, you're gonna have a problem with raccoons or especially like mice, um, but you're gonna have a problem with like rodents getting into your stuff more so than you will bears. Bears are not as much of a problem as people think. They are, when they're a problem, they're a problem, but they're just not as often a problem as rodents are. Um, so that's why I chose to go with a bear canister because I got tired of hanging my food Plus on the PCT, there's not many food hangs. So a lot of people end up sleeping with their food, um, which isn't a good thing. And I don't recommend that you do that. Um, but for me, it's more so like if I slept with my food, it would really piss me off if like, you know, in the middle of the night, I woke up to a mouse in my tent that I chewed through my tent, through my bag to get into my food bag. Um, so just to like avoid all problems whatsoever with food, I chose to go with the bear canister. Um, I got this. This is actually called the Bear Vault. It is an REI. Well, I found it at REI. I don't know if it's an REI product, but I found it at REI, so you can get them there. But they're called Bear Vaults. Um, but yeah, so, and also they make a great camp chair. So as you can see, I'm like, sorry for the crotch shot, but uh, as you can see, they make a great stool to sit on. Um, so a lot of people end up having to find rocks or just sit on the ground. Um, some people bring like these little pads that you can bring. Um, this is a multi-purpose tool. So it stores your food and gives you a great camp chair. All right. So if you stuck with me this far through this video, I really appreciate you watching. I really appreciate you um, taking the time to just uh, be a part of my uh, through hiking journey. Um, thanks to everybody who's been around since uh, the Appalachian Trail. And I look forward to sharing my Pacific Crest Trail journey with you. Um, if you are into backpacking and want to know more about the resources that um, I have as far as like my gear or maybe you're, you, you're like, where do I go get this stuff? Um, you can just follow some of the links um, I'll post in the description of this video. Uh, and so I actually have a code to Hyperlight. And so if you want to click the code, sorry, there's a motorcycle, uh, in my, in the description of this video, um, it'll give you a 15% discount if you follow that link. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for following along and, uh, excited to see you to be out there on the trail and showing you guys, you know, part of the beautiful country that we call home here in the United States, uh, starting July 4th. So yeah, but, uh, as always Maverick out.